Hello, and firstly, my heartfelt thanks to all of those who have subscribed to Head Squeeze. It really is genuinely very important to us. It's also rather flattering. And now, why can't trains go up hills? Now, the smarter ones amongst you will have recognised already, especially if you're a qualified railway engineer, this is a bit of a trick question, because of course trains can go up hills. They're just not very good at it. Which, when you think about the topography of most of the world, is clearly a bit of a problem. Human beings can, admittedly rather sweatily, motivate themselves up a gradient of around 80 degrees, or one in one and a quarter. You do it every time you climb the stairs. Cars can manage gradients of up to about 30%, or one in three, before their tyres start to lose grip, or their gearboxes explode into oily shards. But, as any 1950 schoolboy would tell you, the steepest mainline gradient in Britain is the fearsome Licky Incline in Worcestershire. That is a gradient of just 2.65%, or one in 37 and a half in the old money. And yet, that was considered so terrifying in the days of steam that a train would often have to be pushed from behind, or banks, to use the technical term, by up to four other locomotives. The problem is one of traction, or rather, tractive force, because for all their size and immense weight, trains really struggle to find grip. On a level piece of track, a train is a very efficient thing. The wheels are made of steel, and so are the rails. If you rub two pieces of steel together, you will find they produce very little friction, much less than you'd get between, say, a tyre and a road, or even much less than you'd get between your finger and a piece of glass. Train wheels are also very narrow and profiled in such a way that only a tiny part of them rests on the track. If you take a typical 12-wheeled locomotive with a weight of 120 tonnes, then the size of the contact area between all those wheels and the track is about the same as two 50 pence pieces which for people watching in countries outside Britain is two coins roughly so big. Which explains why trains are so good at slicing the hands and feet off distressed damsels who have been tied to the railway line by Edwardian ruffians. It also explains why trains are able to move at all. The entire weight of the train presses the wheels down into the rails and creates grip, even though it's steel on slippery steel. The tractive force has to overcome the weight of the train, friction and, as it starts to go faster, aerodynamic drag. There comes a point where the aerodynamic drag has built to a point where it's equal to the tractive force and at that point the train has reached its maximum speed. Because weight is so important to the generation of tractive effort, it is possible that a fatter, less powerful locomotive can generate more of it than a lighter but much brawnier one. The upshot of this is that on a nice, straight, level, flat piece of track, a train can reach a surprisingly high top speed despite a limited power output. The Eurostar only generates something like 22 brake horsepower per tonne, or less than a small city car with five fat blokes and a month's supply of pies on board. And yet, the Eurostar can do 200 miles an hour. The car will struggle to crack 70, partly because of the inefficiency and the drag created by its big rubber tyres. But on hills, which the car will crest gracefully, probably in second gear, then the train will run into problems because the gradient will add to the drag created by its weight, but the tractive force remains the same. If it's a powerful locomotive, it might well start spinning its wheels. If it's a puny one, it will probably just grind to a halt, and then the guard will come on the tannoy and blame the stoppage on operational difficulties or something like that. But the net result is the same. You miss your dinner. But for trains, hills cause an even bigger problem, which is how to get down them. Because then all the braking force is concentrated in that same tiny area where the wheels meet the rails. And if it's a particularly steep incline or a particularly heavy train, or even if the rails are very slippery, then your train can run away. So you know those excuses we've all mocked over the years. Mud on the line, leaves on the line, the wrong kind of snow. It's all true, actually. 